Today I'm brewing an American IPA and I'm going to speed things along by using Kvike, Quake, Norwegian farmhouse yeast. I'm Martin Keane taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks and I've reached kind of a, a landmark stage in my homebrew challenge in that I'm now in the IPA section. I just picked up my drop shipment of my IPA recipes behind me here from Atlantic Brew Supply. I'm going to be brewing brown IPA, red IPA, white IPA, Belgian IPA, whole bunch. But today I'm starting with American IPA. And I'm using, for the very first time, Kvike yeast. This in particular is Hornendal Kvike yeast from Amiga. And, well, according to the package here, the temperature range for fermenting with this yeast is between 72 and 98 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to be an interesting brew. Now, full credit for this recipe goes to Homebrew Challenge viewer Jason Temple, who contacted me and said it would be fun to try out his Pineapple Express recipe, which is what I'm going to be using with just a, a couple of modifications to the hops. Now, when you think about the style of American IPA, the first thing you're going to think about is hops, right? And we need to build a malt backbone that will really support those hops. So what we're looking to do is to build a, a grist that's quite malty but shies away from sweetness. Now looking to build a beer here with an original gravity of 1066 and that's going to give us around about a 7% ABV and the bill for this is pretty simple. I'm using Maris Otter at 70% and then Munich 2 at 30%. Now I've got 7.8 gallons of water which I'm heating to my strike temperature of 158 Fahrenheit and I've got a few water salts that I'm just going to use to balance this out so I'm using my pretty much usual mixture of 2 grams of gypsum, 3 grams of Epsom salt and 5 grams of calcium chloride. I'm going to throw that in. Now usually when I get a bunch of ingredients in, I assemble it and crush all the grains all at once so I'm ready for brew day. I haven't done that today, so it's a chance to talk about how I'm using my grain mill. So I'm using a Monster grain mill, it's got two rollers on it. And um, the system that I'm using here allows quite a fine crush. So what I do is I get my feeler gauge here and I've got this set to naught. 0.045 inches, which is two of these things on the feeler gauge. And I'll just make sure each time I use this that they are going through here. In fact, it's a little bit loose. So I'm just going to make sure this is nice and tight without over tightening on that. And that should really help with my efficiency, making sure that the roller gap is where I want it to be. As for drills, I like the idea of cordless drills, but I found that this guy just was getting really burnt out. Uh, it just wasn't powerful enough. So I'm using a corded drill to, to drive my grain. Well, it's not a milling session unless you're absolutely covered in grain dust. Okay, I'm gonna now add this in to the beer. It's not beer yet, is it? It's water. I'm going to add the grains into the water. Now the last few brews I have been double crushing my grains just to see if I get an improvement in efficiency. I'm not sure that I've really noticed much difference, so I haven't double crushed this time. We'll see if we hit my numbers. I'm expecting about a 68% efficiency uh, with this system. 
The pH is at 5.6, which is a little bit high. That's what Beersmith told me it would be. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of lactic acid, recirculate, and then just check it again. See if I'm in a sort of 5.2, 5.3 range. If not, I'll just add a, a touch more lactic acid. But I'm going to mash here at 152 Fahrenheit for about an hour. Now I mentioned earlier that quake yeast send, tends to do quite well with warmer temperatures. In fact, it prefers that. And if you hit the higher temperature ranges, you're likely to see more ester production, which is exactly what we want to see in this beer. So I'm going to ferment at the ridiculous temperature of 95 Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm going to use my chest freezer and I've set it to heat up to 95 Fahrenheit. I've done that using a Brewer's Edge space heater, which I left running overnight. And this is just stuck to the side of the chest freezer and is connected to my temperature controller. It doesn't give off a huge amount of heat, but I guess it's just enough. Uh, and it builds up over time because the heat's got nowhere to escape in the chest freezer. So, yep, this is set to 95 degrees and it's waiting for the beer. That's it for the mash. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of two and a half gallon batches recently, but I have done a five gallon batch here because I just am so excited about this beer. Uh, the only downside is there's quite a bit more grain that I need to pull out now and I haven't set up my pulley in this new setup. So uh, see how it goes. As far as hops go, we're looking to get about an IBU of 61 from this. That's, so that's the bitterness, but what about the flavor and aroma, which is really the important part of this? Well, what we're going for is citrusy, pineapple-y, tropical kind of flavors. So to get there, well, we'll start off with some bittering hops. I'm gonna use Centennial as my bittering hop, which will go in at 60 minutes. With 15 minutes to go, I'm going to add Denali or Sultana. Apparently that's two names for basically the same hop. And what this is going to give is a citrus, pineapple-y sort of um, aroma, a little bit of spiciness in there as well. And then a flame out, I have Coatu, which will also contribute a little bit to the pineapple and the lime aroma that we're looking to build into this beer. That's one hour done. Gonna add the Kuatu now as my flame out addition. And now I'm going to begin the pretty short process to cool this down to about 95 Fahrenheit. Well, I've chilled the wort down to around 95 and aerated it as well because this is a reasonably high gravity beer. So now it is time to add in this yeast. Now, Kvike yeast, there's lots of different strains. I'm using um, this one, Hornendal, which is really designed to emphasize uh, fruity hops and to bring out esters of um, a pineapple and dried fruit. But there are, there are Kvike strains that support clean lagers as well. I'm quite interested to give some of those a try. Now, one thing that I read about with Kvike in general is that it's recommended that you under pitch it. So it sort of makes sense to me that you would 
get more esters and phenols from under pitching. That's exactly what I did with the, um, the wheat beer that I made, the Hefeweizen. I under pitched that and I was getting a little bit more banana and clove, I think, by under pitching. But the instructions here from Amiga, they say that there is enough in one packet here for a five gallon batch of up to 1060 OG, which is pretty close to what this is. Perhaps we should not be surprised that a yeast company is not recommending under pitching yeast on their packaging. But regardless, that is what I'm gonna do. I am gonna put all of the yeast that's in this packet per the instructions right into here. So it's just a case of sanitizing the packet and the scissors, snip it open. and then pour it in. So I'm gonna put this in to ferment at 95 Fahrenheit, 35 Celsius. I'm gonna leave it for about a week. Vike is supposed to be pretty fast to ferment. Uh, then assuming it's done, I will check. I'll then cold crash it and plan to serve in about 10 days time. So I'll see you then. My, what a foamy set of beers we've got. Yeah, that's really crazy. I've just been sat here getting the video ready and it seems to have, like, the foam is growing. It's like a volcano that you do in, like, middle school. <laughs> Did we put some, like, mentos in here? Mentos, and, yeah. yeah. I don't know, it's just <laughs> definitely carbonated, that's for sure. This is a carbonated beer. Okay, it has been uh, 10 days since this was grain in a bag. Okay. So this is fast. Um, the fermentation, it was speedy. I checked on it the next morning after brew day and it's already at 10.23. So it blew through this beer and I can't wait to try it. So, okay. We, we, How do you smell it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about the appearance? Uh, foamy? Yeah. And what do you think about the color of the actual beer itself? Um, it's quite golden um, and it's very bubbly. I can see all the carbonation yeah. in it. Yeah. So um, a little cloudy, which I think you would expect. Yeah. I did not provide any finings to this beer. Uh, so it hasn't really had time to settle. I think with a bit more time, this would clear up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think it looks perfectly presentable yeah. as it is. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to just drink the foam. <laughs> All right, down hatch. <laughs> oh my goodness. I cannot believe this beer is 10 days old. For me, the, the tropical fruit flavors are really quite apparent in this already. I don't know if I can smell, smell them a bit more. I can, because it's on my nose. <laughs> You're wearing it. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's really much in the way of hop bitterness. No, that, there's, I don't think there's much bitterness no. in it at all. No, I, I think uh, this reminds me actually a little bit more of a, an English IPA in that there's the, the malt character to it. Mm -hmm. And then there are some very American hops added in, um, or what I would associate with American beer. So, very much uh, fruity hops, but no real bite to it in terms yeah. of bitterness. You put that into words for me. That's exactly what I was thinking. Because usually with a like a IP like Indian IPA or whatever, mm -hmm. it has that tartness that sometimes you can't really like. You're like, oh, that might be a little bit too much. But this one is a quite smooth drinking on the mouthfeel. It's. Considering its age, it's unbelievably smooth. It doesn't taste green, it doesn't taste young. It tastes fresh and fruity and yeah, I like, I like this one. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna last on tap. <laughs> well, if you want to try this beer, particularly if you're in a hurry, uh, this is such a good opportunity to, to brew a beer like this and just have it ready like next week. Um, all you need is in the description below, including beer kits from Atlantic Brew Supply, if you just want to get the kit of all the ingredients. And next week, we are moving on to a style that I could not be more excited about. It's the first beer from a country that I haven't done yet, and it's one of my favorite places. 
You know it? Uh, I think I think I do. Yeah. I should know it. Yeah. yeah. Well, tune in next week, by which time I'm quite sure there'll be none of this beer left. And we'll work on that one. Awesome. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers.